enough to catch their own prey, gather here beneath the podcast for a clan meeting. Welcome to Paws and Claws, a podcast where we read the Warrior Cats books in chronological order. I'm Scout, joined by my co-host Jill, winner of Warriors, the graphic novel commemorative tote bag from the Barnes & Noble release event. And today, we will be discussing the fifth published novella, Leaf Pool's Wish, and the After Sunset short stories. Jill, congratulations on your tote bag! Thank you, thank you. I worked very hard for it. Uh, no, they raffled it off, uh, and I just got lucky. Um, which I'm really glad, because I was like, I went into that... I went into the event specifically like, I want this fucking tote bag so bad. It's so good. I'm so happy that you got it. How was the it's event? It's so cute. Oh, Look it's at this. so cute. Oh, fire is coming to save our clan. Yeah, it's got a little fire heart jumping through a, through a bunch of flames and the back says warriors and it's got oh, that uh, look at so cute. It looks like blue star on the back beautiful yeah it's very nice i love how scrungly all of the cats look in the oh my graphic God, novel it's so good oh it's so good so the funny thing is i was gonna get a copy of the graphic novel when i went there i didn't see it anywhere <laughs> i think they sold out oh no uh <laughs> Because I was expecting, like, you know, they would have them up front and center. Mm -hmm. There were no copies Damn. that I could find Damn. in the warrior section or on the display next to the... Uh, I'll post a picture of this on our Twitter after this episode releases. <laughs> yeah, I loved um, the image that you <laughs> sent. <laughs> there is a... They had... Uh, I really, I really wish I had asked <laughs> if, you could if I could buy home. that from them and take it home. <laughs> I almost called Barnes & Noble today and was like, hey, that event you guys had yesterday, can I, like, come by that cardboard cutout? But then I was like, where the fuck am I going to put that's it? The, that's the agony, right? If we had a house, I would not have hesitated. Mm -hmm. um, but given that we are in an apartment, <laughs> I don't think my husband would have appreciated. And especially because uh, I know you guys are hoping to upgrade in, like, the relatively near future. Yeah, so it's like, exactly. you're going you're gonna to bring this Warrior Cats cardboard standee into my house and then we're going to have to pack it. Yeah, exactly. But yes, I will post a picture. They had a nice big standee uh, that you could, like, put your face through and be one of the cats in ThunderClan. Obsessed with it. Uh, and they did... They did have like a book stand of like display next to it, so I expect that's where they would have had it. Damn, who knew that? Who knew that the warrior cats were still so so like hot? Oh, let me tell you, <laughs> at this event, I was you know relatively like on edge about being the only like adult there mm -hmm. uh, because you know yeah. it's a kid series Absolutely. and this is a. A new, a new book in the kids series that's retelling the beginning. So, like, there's probably going to be new fans there. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> there were several, um, not, like, young kids, but I would say, like, late elementary school. Mm -hmm. um, there were some teenagers. Uh, and then there was a small contingent of Warrior Cats adults yes. that I hung out with in the corner. Oh, uh, that's great. All of us. All of us. Like, adult age, over 20, over 30, uh, <laughs> kind of uh, hanging out there. But it was really nice. Like, there were people of all ages there. It was really cool to That's see, really like, fun. you know, not just old standbys of the series, but, like, people who are newer into it. And let me fucking tell you, I was going there like, oh, I'm going to kick some kids ass in trivia. <laughs> I'm so glad it was not a who is the best at trivia for this <laughs> tote bag because I have a feeling some of those kids may have destroyed me. Oh, damn. They were coming and they were ready. They were ready. These children know their shit. Damn. Um, but it was so funny. So, like, some of the questions were like, you know, obviously this was a an event for a, a book about the first series. So, like, the questions obviously are about the first series. However, when you have a series like Warriors that has 20 years of canon and you start asking questions that are open ended enough <laughs> that they could be about any point in the series, mm -hmm. um, you're going to get some very opinionated children telling you, well, there's more than one answer to that. <laughs> or <laughs> why are they me? Why are those kids no, me? Literally, literally me and the other adults were like, we've got to dumb ourselves down for this because we're like, 
Okay. One of the questions was who served Thunder Clan as Medicine Cat the longest? And we're like, well, that would have to be Leaf Pool, right? Like, cause she Leaf Pool or Cinderpelt, because they serve for a long time. But like they're just talking about series one, so it's Yellow Fang. <laughs> Oh. And so and so we're over here like is it leaf pool or cinder pelt and then we're like no this is the first series we can't think about this but like all of those kids were like what do you mean yellow fang it's leaf pool <laughs> yes! um, <laughs> and then there were like three different questions of who is Firepaw's mentor and he had three different mentors so he it was did. a different answer every single time and we're just like any of the three choose any of the three there's three of one. them um yeah, so there were some questions. Oh gosh, what was the other one? Oh, who's the first leader of Thunder Clan was one of the questions. But it's supposed to be who the leader of Thunder Clan is at the start of the series, which is, is Blue Star. Blue Star. Every, all of the kids were like, it's Thunder Star. Thunder Star, obviously. <laughs> obviously, it's Thunder Star. <laughs> It was so fucking funny. And so Holy me and the shit. other adults, like, you know, we were being very, uh, very pedantic about the answers too, and very, very much like <laughs> doing that. But we saw these kids doing the same thing. We're like, all right, yeah, the next generation of Warriors kids is just as like deep in the deep in the shit as we Dude, are. We're so. there. Everybody's so deep in the paint. If you you're either <laughs> you either have no idea what Warrior Cats is or you have every idea what Warrior Cats exactly. is. Exactly. Like you either don't don't know or like know like a word or two yeah like i've i've started to uh my husband now calls zelda's food kitty pet slop sometimes yes <laughs> uh <laughs> and then he asked me last night what her warrior name would be so uh we're, yes. starting, to get, we're starting to get them gamers this is just a long con, <laughs> a long this, con. Whole pod, this whole podcast is just a multi-year psyop to get my husband to enjoy warriors content oh god so thank you all for participating it's starting to work we're doing it we're um, doing it gamers <laughs> we're doing it but yeah so it was it was really funny to see like you know uh, this poor woman who was running the event was like oh i haven't read these i don't know and we're like no we're not mad at you we're questioning the integrity of the people who made these questions because they are not good questions this is like us doing the quizzes from the warriors website and being no, like real well, actually, if you think about it, literally, um, <laughs> and the way that you phrased this, then it would be any <laughs> No, that's literally exactly what it was like. It was so funny. But the other really nice thing was, um, you know, we went there and had a great time. They were not expecting as many people to show up as, as showed up. She had to go and make more copies of the activity sheets. They ran out of like the little, they almost ran out of the little sample booklets that they had. Oh, wow. Like, uh, and at the end when we were, you know, thanking her, we were like, oh yeah, thank you so much for like, you know, running and, and, and doing this. And she's like, you know, we have not had this many people show up for an event before. Oh, and I'm like, man. That just made me like it made me happy that so many people showed up for this, mm -hmm. especially because I didn't go. I was originally going to go to the one in the bigger city at the at the huge mall. Right. Uh, but I decided not to because I was like, OK, there's going to be way too many people there. If I want a tote bag, I have a better chance <laughs> at the tinier one. But like, you know, s not a small town, but a smaller city. Yeah. On a rainy Saturday in the middle of summer, like. You know, people would be doing other things, but mm -hmm. there were a lot of uh, a lot of folks there. And it, it, you know, it made me happy that there were a lot of people there. And it also kind of like triggered that nostalgia feeling of like, oh, man, I remember when I was a kid and we would go to those midnight book release parties at the Barnes and Noble. I just miss that shit so much. I know the Internet has done a lot of good things, such as uh, we have been able to meet each other and we get to make this podcast, which is great. <laughs> but it's also done some terrible things, such as destroying like books everywhere booksellers yeah. and the activity of buying books and uh the uh like feeling of community around being a a fan in a local area of something it like, really has yeah i never went to any of those but like i remember walking past bookstores and like seeing the lines of people going yeah. for midnight stuff well and shoot like GameStop used to do yeah. midnight release things for like Pokemon and stuff. And it was so cool. It just kind of died out. And it's mm -hmm. a real bummer because I think the last midnight release that I went to was barely even like 
an event. It yeah. was just, we will be open at midnight so you can come in and get your game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was for Fire Emblem Birthright and Conquest. Oh. So quite a few years ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and that's the last time I remember there being like a, we will be open at midnight so you can come get your physical copy. What I'm saying is I feel like this just goes to show that if you build it, they will come. If you run an event, like the people who are passionate about it will show up and they will participate with absolute enthusiasm. Like every single person there was so excited and every time there was a question that we were answering, we all shouted out the answers and like everybody was happy. It was a great time. That's awesome. Um, And I met a couple of folks who were semi-local that like I got along with really well. We have a lot of similar interests. And I was like, oh, this is so nice. Like meeting fans in real life again. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell um, yeah. So it was a good time. I really enjoyed it. I think it was it was an absolute blast. I hope they do one for the next book, but I'm not going to hold my breath. But we did get, they gave us little preview booklets of the next graphic novel. We get to see some, uh, some very, very cute little scrungly kittens. Uh, Oh, I love them. Uh, and big old yellow, yellow fang on the cover. Yellow fang. They also gave us temporary tattoos. Yes! (laughs) These are so cool. I like don't want to use them because (laughs) they're so cool. But I'm also like, oh my god, how sick would it be to have like this phases of the moon tattoo going around my wrist or around my arm? Honestly, I would get one as a real tattoo. No, same. I I leaned forward to see them and so I was away from my mic. Sorry, AJ. (laughs) Um, but yeah, and then they had a little activity sheet. I did not do the maze because I did it with my eyes and I was like, I'm not going to waste ink. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was a crossword. There's only one I didn't fill in because I couldn't remember at the time. And then we had to turn these in because they were flipping them for or pulling them for the raffle. Oh, but it was very fun. Hell yeah. Unscramble a little uh, trivia thing, but it was a good time. I love this. I love this so much. Yeah, I I really enjoy, you know, I've been to several um, author meet and greets before. Like I've mentioned, I went to the one for the Warriors way back when I was a kid. I went to a couple later in high school and college. And like, it's really fun to go to those and like get to talk to the author and stuff like that. But I think these book releases are like kind of more fun because <laughs> yeah. it's a lot more of like, Getting to interact with other people instead of like waiting in line to go take a picture with someone. Yeah. And there's not for for me, I would feel like this pressure of like, this is my one chance to like meet this yeah. author. Right. So like I have and to say I, something oh, cool <laughs> and say something and like overthink everything. And but this is a yeah. lot more just like some fans having fun. Yeah. So it was a great time. Uh, thank you for letting me ramble about this. Of course. This is what we're all here for. <laughs> it was a great time. Hope they do another one. If they do another one, hope to see some of y'all listeners there. That would be fun. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. How's the prey running, Scout? Prey is running pretty good. Uh, you know, I made I made something. You know, I don't I don't often talk about my failures on this podcast when it comes to food. Uh, I made something that I've talked about before on the podcast, uh, which is like a, a ground beef potato and pea curry. Uh, and when I do that kind of thing, I generally use we have like a couple different kinds of curry powder. Uh, and so I was at the bottom of one, and uh, I opened it up, and it had apparently a lot of little saffron fronds in the bottom of it. It was like, Ooh. it was like a small little thing of, uh, of like, you know, kind of fancy curry powder with the saffrons in it. And, and so I, uh, I just sort of dumped the rest of it in. I've learned, I don't like saffron. I did not like oh. it. It was so sad. That's a shame. It was a real shame. I don't know if I've ever had like real saffron is mm-hmm. the thing. Like I've had saffron rice from the grocery store but like (laughs) that's yellow rice who knows it's just yellow rice (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, that is a shame, though. It was such a shame. I was so excited about the meal, and then it just did not. It was not a good good time on my palate. But excited oh. to excited to come back and do it again because I've made this recipe before and I really liked it before. So just gotta go. It was probably also that it was just too much saffron because it was all of the stuff that like didn't come out of the holes. So it was the bottom of mm. the of the little shaker. So it was all of the saffron. It was just probably just too much saffron. That might be it. Yeah, because you know they use. Like it's since it's so expensive, you just got to use like a little strand of it. Exactly. Just a little bit. But I was like, well, I'm not going to put all that's left in I'm here. I'm just going to dump it all. All that's left in here is saffron. I'm not putting that away back in the cabinet. But I also don't want to waste the saffron because I know it's expensive. These are the things. Yeah. These are the these are the errors that we make sometimes in cooking. The pitfalls of life. Mm hmm. These are the this, this is the hardships that we have to go through sometimes yeah. to build character. Yeah, exactly. Uh, sorry that your your meal did not turn out as well as you'd hope. Yeah, but yeah, these are, you know, I have to, I want to share these things so you all don't just, you know, look out there and you think, man, Scout and Jill, they're just always talking about what they're cooking and they're always making amazing foods. It comes out amazing every time. That doesn't happen to me. You know, sometimes it doesn't go that way. We're not, well, we're not, we're not gods. <laughs> We are not because, uh, dear listeners, I have not cooked in months because we've been so like overwhelmed. Yeah. Uh, so we finally got back to cooking this week. <gasps> wow. Um, so yes, thank you, drugs. I'd like to thank Let's the go. Academy. I'd like to thank uh, Focalin <laughs> and <laughs> Let's Go <laughs> Grocery Store Pickup Services um, for you know, improving my life and allowing me to do this thing. I couldn't have gotten here without you. Uh, but yeah, so we start, we've gotten back into cooking, um, which has been really nice. You know, we've just been so, things have been crazy around mm -hmm. here. So it's been a lot of like ordering or getting like pre-made meals right, from the grocery yeah. store, which mm -hmm. like, here's the thing. I'm going to say this. There might be some of you out here who have been through this. As long as you're eating, that's good. Exactly. That's the most <laughs> important matter, thing. Doesn't matter if it is a frozen meal that you're reheating in the microwave. If you are getting food in your belly, like most that's important a win. thing is to get the food, get the nutrition, get the yeah. get all of the good nutrients that you need for your body, and that can look like a bunch of different things. Uh, like, exactly, uh, and with different things for different people. Totally, absolutely. Don't believe um, anything that. The internet tells you about what healthy food is. Unless we're telling you. Unless we're telling you. <laughs> because we are both 100% totally certified nutritionists. <laughs> Actually, my cousin is a nutritionist. But yeah, so, you know, it's it's been, you know, I've I've been through a couple of periods of this in my life where, you know, cooking has just become. It's hard sometimes. An insurmountable task. Yeah. And uh, all that matters is you get the food in you and you get your body back to the point where you feel like you can you can handle things again. Hell yeah. So small wins everywhere. Big wins with the tote bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, dear listeners, just take care of yourselves. Take care of yourselves. This is a PSA. PSA. I made meatballs today. Oh, hell yeah. So good. Meatballs. We had spaghetti. We had spaghetti and meatballs. Love a meatball. After after recording, I'm going to help. Dad made some uh, pizza dough today, the kind of pizza dough that it's got to like sit all day. We're going to make some homemade pizza. Oh, I'm looking up the quickest flight to you. Right <laughs> Come on over. I want pizza. Oh, I love homemade pizza. We were <laughs> hilariously, mm. we were supposed to have it yesterday, but this is another silly fail. First of all, Dad didn't make the pizza dough like early in the morning. Secondly, then we had the ham that we were going to use on the pizza for lunch. And then only later did I realize, wait, we were saving that ham to put on the pizza. <laughs> oh, I've done that before. Oh, sometimes, sometimes. Sometimes you just flub it. It's fine. I love how we've been talking for like 45 minutes and we have not even gotten into the actual content of the podcast. I know, we, haven't, we gotta get going. We've just, we've just been yapping. AJ, AJ feel free to cut liberally. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we got some fun art. Yeah, I, I got a couple, I got a couple Polish, or I got one Polish cover here. Uh, Poland does it again. This is a great image of like, leaf pool sitting outside of the hollowed out tree that she uh that she has spoilers 
her kits in. <gasps> She's pregnant. She's sitting there in the snow. She has the saddest eyes in the world. I know. Uh, she's like looking up. I want up. to hold her. <laughs> um, the colors are just beautiful. Like I love when artists render snow and you get to see like all of these like soft buttery yellows and then these really cool blue shadows. Looks great. Love it. A uh, fun fact, this is both the same artist that did the great covers we talked about uh, in the last episode, the gray stripe manga Polish covers. Um, and also, even though these are Polish covers, this artist uh, goes by Zilvin and is Taiwanese. Oh, that's cool. And I think has maybe also done some Taiwanese covers as well as Polish covers, which I think is fun and interesting. That is fun. Um, oh, love that. Yeah. So that's a little look into the artists. Fun fact, I also saw that uh, this this guy has, in Taiwan, has a fursuit, like a small company that makes fursuits. I love that. That's so cool. It's great. It's awesome. Uh, so yeah, if you want to look up Zilvin, seems seems like he does some cool stuff. Uh, the That's other one, awesome. yeah, the other one I wanted to talk about is another one of those great woodcut style illustrations. I'm gonna make this a little bigger so you can see it. Uh, I'm just obsessed with the texture of Squirrel Flight here. She's got all of these like curling, beautiful, uh, <gasps> like long fur bits, and uh, her little white paw is really prevalent. And then we've got Leaf Pool in the foreground. Uh, Leonid, she looks. So so sad. She does. They both look so sad. Leonid Nasirov, you cooked with this one. You are always cooking. I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. I'm I'm doing my best out here. <laughs> we are but simple Americans. I gotta I gotta look up a pronunciation guide next time I shout you out, my guy. Uh, other than that, I suppose I suppose I should get to the summary, huh? <gasps> yeah, tell me all about this mysterious pregnancy. Yeah. I wonder who the father is. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, so quick disclaimer before the before the proper summary. We are talking about both the Leaf Pool's Wish novella and the two After Sunset short stories. Uh, both of the short stories are both extremely short and kind of take place concurrently with Leaf Pool's Wish. So I've basically done one summary that puts all of those together and then we will discuss them like separately once we once we get there in our in our overall discussion but this is covering all of the things that we read today the sun has set blood has spilled blood but leafpool continues to feel a disquiet within herself her clan's security seems to sit on a razor's edge a chance encounter with Brambleclaw outside camp shows that, after everything that happened with Hawkfrost, he fears he will bring only pain to ThunderClan. His words ringing out like a prophecy in Leafpool's ears. But she must put those nerves aside for now and tend to the wounds, physical and emotional, that her clanmates have suffered. She is reminded time and time again how deeply she cares for every cat around her and knows she made the right choice in returning to ThunderClan. But something still isn't quite right. As a moon passes and life settles back to normalcy for most, the young healer realizes she now walks a path few in her position ever have. She's carrying Crowfeather's kits. Frightened and overwhelmed, Leafpool visits the Moon Pool to consult with Star Clan. There, she is reprimanded by her warrior ancestors for her actions, but is also assured that, despite her taboo, they will walk with her every step of her journey, and with her kits as well, as they have a grand destiny ahead of them. Leafpool confides her woes to her sister, Squirrel Flight. The two of them return again to the Moon Pool, where Squirrel Flight is entreated by Yellowfang to raise Leafpool's kits as her own, adding with a somewhat dubious omen that it will be Squirrel Flight's only chance to raise a family, as she will never have a litter herself. Despite this, Squirrel Flight is not convinced she could maintain the lie and deceive everyone in her life. But still, she vows to keep her sister's secret and to do everything else she can to help her. 
Leafpool tries at one point to tell Crowfeather her secret, but loses her nerve when their conversation is interrupted and turns sour, resolving to walk this path without him. As her due date draws closer, she fabricates the need for a rare herb as an excuse to be away from camp for several weeks, with Squirrel Flight insisting on accompanying her. The two journey outside the clan territories and, with the help of Yellowfang, who manifests physically to assist when Leafpool goes into labor, three kits are delivered within the safety of a hollowed out tree trunk. After this, faced with the reality of their predicament, Squirrel Flight strengthens her resolve and agrees to raise her sister's kids. The two mothers, one biological, one adoptive, work together to name their children. Lion Kit, Holly Kit, and Jay Kit. They spend the next two weeks in the hollow tree watching the kits begin to grow. They quickly realize that the littlest one, Jay Kit, is blind, though he compensates well with his other senses. Squirrel Flight worries what this will mean for the Tiny Tom, but Leafpool insists he will live a full life and to become a warrior despite his disability. She notices how Lion Kit and Holly Kit guide their brother in play, and silently hopes the three will always have each other. At last, it is time for them to return to ThunderClan. As they approach their home, the sisters swap places, and Leafpool watches as Squirrel Flight becomes the mother she wishes she could continue to be, preparing for the future ahead of her. Though her kits will not know her as their mother, she will never stop loving them as one. So we got some big reveals here. We sure do. Overall thoughts, what did you think of like this novella in general? I enjoyed it. Me too. Overall, I, I liked it. I There were parts of it that I was like not too keen on. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but I think overall, like it was a really solid like... It felt like it moved very, the pacing was very good. It mm-hmm. felt like it gave the information it needed to. Mm-hmm. And uh, definitely, definitely worth the read, I think. Yeah, I, I was quite surprised by how effective some of the like real high emotional moments were for me. Mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting it to feel like, I was expecting it to feel kind of maybe a little canned or, or just like a little dry. Mm-hmm. And it and it really felt pretty good. Um, yeah. Like overall, I think the emotional beats were hit well. I really enjoyed the dynamic between Leafpool and Squirrel Flight. Mm-hmm. Like, I loved the, getting to see them together as getting sisters. Getting to see their sister relationship again after it's been, you know, since uh, midnight. Yeah. <laughs> we've seen them like as like actual siblings yeah um it was really nice uh it was very like i will say uh squirrel flights like immediate like absolutely not i am not doing this for you took me by surprise i thought Um, that that was an interesting uh like swerve it wasn't what i expected yeah i had always been under the impression that she was like yeah you're my sister and i do everything for anything for you so like of course i'll do this but like she was very adamantly against it, uh, which I think is a nice touch. I yeah, think that's a I, very interesting way of looking at it. The thing that rubbed me the wrong way was the way Star Clan like pressured her to, oh my to God. get on. They're like the way they were lying <laughs> and Bro. gaslighting and manipulating. Bro. Oh my Holy God. Holy shit. This is the worst Yellow Fang has ever looked. I know. I was like, it was this bad. Is, this it is bad. Who is, who is doing this to my queen? This is not her. This is not. She would not say that. This is. She would not fucking say this. That was just. That yikes. was brutal. Yikes. Like, it was. It was absolutely brutal because I even had to be like, well, no, Squirrel Flight's not infertile. Like canonically i think in the future she does have kids she does so the fact that they just fucking tell her that unreal unbelievable like i was first just to start i was like major spotted leaf l just because wow she was so fucking rude to leaf pool she was so fucking rude 
Like, girl, shut the fuck up. Shh, everybody shut up. Okay, wait, before we get deeper into this, I do want to touch briefly on reading order versus publication order for this. Uh, right. Swirling, swirling back in time. Fun fact for the listeners, if you have not read this before, this is a spot where our reading order is really like, I th- personally, I think this is going to make it shine. I'm so excited about all of the dramatic irony we'll be playing in. Um, but originally, the information that these kits were actually Leaf Pools kits was not something that it was revealed until later in the in our next season in the upcoming arc, uh, Power of Three. And I'm yeah. just so excited about having this information. And it's pretty deep into it's Power of Three. It's pretty deep in, yeah. I, I feel like it is book five. Yeah, it's it's late. Um, um, I will say, like, I remember at the time of reading Power of Three, like, Leafpool being the three's mother was, like, very, like, a very popular fan theory. Mm-hmm. So, like... People knew, but it was never confirmed until like book five or six. We are going to talk about uh, one of the short stories we're going to talk about later that that was written and uh, actually ties in with fan stuff, uh, written and performed contemporary with the start of Power of Three. So there was stuff in there that was implied, but it was never, it was, it was implicit, but it was never explicit. Mm -hmm. And here we get it so explicitly. And I just wanted to bring it up here because I think we've had some, some listeners ask us before, like, what are you going to do about this part of the reading order? Um, and I just think it's so fun to have this information like up front and use that to shape the way that we're going to look at like the whole rest of this this upcoming season, this upcoming arc. I'm excited about yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. I think for this reveal uh, specifically, I think the dramatic irony will be more fun than the... Um, the surprise factor, right? Yeah, the surprise factor. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. the dramatic irony is going to be more fun. Yeah, I'm so um, excited about it. I'm very, very stoked. Uh, but yeah, I I do remember like everyone was questioning. They're like, they could be Leaf Pool's kids. Like, could be Leaf Pool and Crowfeather's kids. We just got, we just don't know. Um, I love that because this is at this <laughs> point in like the original releasing of the series. I had totally like checked out of mm-hmm. being like anywhere near the fandom or like fan theories or anything. So I I did not like I love hearing your perspective on the rumors. Oh yeah. This was my like height of being in the Warriors fandom. Uh was the Power of 3 era cuz that is when I finally got a fanfiction.net account. Yes. Um and that's when I started reading and writing fanfic and doing a uh, like role play with people who were not my immediate like school friends. Mm -hmm. So power of three is really where like everything popped off for, for me, especially in terms of like it being the first active fandom I was a part of and like so many things about it. And I have a little bit to say about this in, um, in the sharing tongues corner, but so many things about like the way fandom was then like I still see now and it's really nice to see like the theorizing and stuff like that. Like that just was so much fun. Oh, hell yeah. And like everybody trying to like put piece things together and piece the mysteries together. It was it was a lot of fun. I love that. So I'm very, very excited to revisit this time because I remember it being like this was when I was like churning it out. I was writing like 2,000 words a day. Hell yeah. Hell was, yeah. It was crazy town. <laughs> <laughs> it was wild out there. It was. That's so good. But yeah, so Star Clan fully lying about everything. Holy shit. Um, oh my god. <laughs> they this were even is... like, Star Clan's never seen the future before. Lies, Lies. that happened in Cloud Star's uh, journey. Um, and also before that, I'm pretty sure. It happened. I mean, it hadn't been written yet, but literally in the end of Shadow Star's life, we see the entire chronology yeah. of the future of the Warrior Cats books. Yeah. So they're fucking lying. Uh, uh, the way Star Clan acted in this book just pissed of, me off. It was <laughs> off the charts rancid. Yeah, it was not good. They were shaming Leafpool 
and then simultaneously also telling her that her kits are very important. And literally, like, she's like, well, I can just, you know, she she if I recall correctly, she hints she at, at one like, point says I shouldn't. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have these kits. Yeah, she's at one point like, I'll just get an, a cat abortion. <laughs> But they're like, no, these kids have to be born. But like, how fucking dare you get pregnant? And it's like, yeah. okay, but which also, one is it, Star Clan? But also, you can't leave your clan. And also, you they, can't tell your clan. So it's you like, can't tell your clan. You, you guys can't are leave really your clan. Not giving her any options. Ah, it's, it's so bad. It's so <laughs> bad. It's so bad. I'm st- listen. I expect this kind of behavior from Spotted Leaf. We've seen. Right. Spotted We've leaf her. be rancid before. I'm so disappointed in Yellow Fang. And Blue Star. And Blue Star. Oh my god, yeah. Blue like, Star. Girl, you you've been through this. You and Yellow Fang should be the most fucking sympathetic. All right of them, now. I cannot believe how unsympathetic both of them are when they literally have been through this exact, almost exact same thing. Like Blue yeah. Star, a little bit different, but still it was about profession versus family, basically. Yeah, exactly. Oh my and god. It was it's absolutely insane. I can, I'm just gonna get too heated about it and, and just keep <laughs> saying the same things over and over again. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't um, have anything additional to say about it except I don't know. Institutions sometimes institutions are worse. <laughs> yeah, Star Clan feels so much like some sort of weird, like all powerful institutional thing here to me. Like, like. Mm. G- governmental in a lot of ways um yeah versus being more uh like religious and religion like government and religion are constantly overlapping that is the source of many I- ills right. in the world writ large and has been since the dawn of humanity but it it's so just everything is so rancid here i hit my mic i'm so mm. ah <laughs> I'm not smart enough to have like better thoughts about it or or more articulated feelings about why it feels so bad. But boy, it just feels so bad. Yeah. But, you know, we are first and foremost uh, Starkland haters. It's true. Despite despite our sign off, Mm -hmm. there's always the caveat. May Starkland guide your paws, except (laughs) or may Starkland guide your paws. But don't fucking trust those bitches for don't a second. Don't trust them. <laughs> Star Clan better guide your paws. I'm looking at you, Star Clan. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. We also had a weird leaf pool L here with the scene where she's like, "I can't be with Crowfeather. I'm gonna be rude to Crowfeather. I have to push him away. I can't. I can't be. I can't be getting like these feelings. I can't be catching feelings for Crowfeather again. I have to be pushing him away." And then he responds to that and is like, "Okay, I can see you're making distance." So I'm also going to be distant. And then she's like, what the hell? What the fuck? How could Crowfeather move on? Why was he lying to me when he said he cared five seconds ago? I'm so alone. Leaf pool. I think the timeline for the leaf pool and Crowfeather relationship is really interesting with the context of these stories. Mm -hmm. Because in the play, he's like, oh, yeah, Nightcloud had my kits last month. Yeah, there's... Hmm. There now is... I know how long cats are <laughs> pregnant for, and uh, that seems to insinuate that Mr. Crowfeather got uh, Miss Nightcloud pregnant before he got Miss Leafpool pregnant. It's, you uh, know... all I'm saying. It's possible. Now, there is... It does say on the wiki that this is, like, a timeline flub and not necessarily intentional, mm. but I also think it's a fun read, you know? <laughs> Yeah, there's a little bit of cheeky fun. You know, and and he does reveal in later books like why he got with Nightcloud, and so I think there's a there's a whole thing. Yeah, yeah. So I think it does make sense that he would be with her like at the same time as Leafpool. But wowzers, uh, in the we need to talk. It sure uh, sure hits because. If we're taking the reading that Leafpool is pregnant at the time that she's talking to Crowfeather and he's like, oh, yeah, Nightcloud had my kids last month. She's like, oh, okay, so we really don't have shit to say to each other because you're over here 
already a dad, so I'm not even going to fucking talk to you about this shit. Yeah, I was reading it as like the scene that happens in Leafpool's Wish is like a different writing of the same scene that we see in the script. Mm. So I'm not even I, I, I don't know if that's what it is, but I sort of looked at that as like an alternate version of the same scene. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, the timeline, the timeline is just all messed up because it also says Hawk Frost died two moons ago, but he should have be because of when he died and the time that this is taking place, he should have died five months ago. So like, yeah, there's Once again, the Warriors canon is a thing. Sometimes I think Vicky <laughs> just writes dates. Sometimes I think they just write. Th- well, I think Vicky, is- I think Vicky just says shit. <laughs> Yeah, I think sometimes they do just say shit. Because um, a lot of times, a lot of times it's like the supplementary stuff that Victoria Holmes herself was writing instead of like just being the uh, like idea guy true. and editor and stuff. And she just and she will, you know, say shit. And it's like, I, that's doesn't quite. OK, I mean, you're the editor. Yeah. <laughs> it's like fucking. Um, oh, God, there was another series I've read or like watched that has like this exact problem of like. Sometimes someone else comes, well, I guess Star Wars, but we're not talking like extended universe shit. That's not what I'm thinking of. I mean, that is what happened with The Last Jedi. That is what happened with like Rise of Skywalker. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's for sure (laughs) is. Rise of Skywalker was literally J.J. Abrams coming in and be like, I want to do it this way. I can't get into this I know, right now. I know, we can't, we can't talk get, about I'm Star sorry. Wars. We can't get into it. But no, like there have been series where it's like, you know, There is the canon and then there's like the author will also write side stuff that's also technically canon, but also contradicts the canon. Mm -hmm. Like this is not just a Warriors thing. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. Who boy does it does it frustrate those of us who are trying to be lore masters and put everything in chronological order and make sense of the narrative that they are trying to tell. Exactly. And I think what the and I'm going to give Victoria Holmes a lot of. um a lot of credit here mm-hmm. or a lot of like leeway. Yeah. Benefit of the doubt. A lot of. Yes. I'm going to give her a huge benefit of the doubt. I think the purpose of these kind of contradictory, almost short stories is more to convey a point rather than to be canon. It's vibes. It's vibes. based. It's about the vibes. Mm-hmm. It's about the emotional Exploring a different like part of the emotional aspect of the story or like delivering a piece of information that needs to be delivered but was not done properly mm-hmm. originally. So, it, it you know, I, I do for all that we rag on the fact that the canon is um, a hot mess of spaghetti. Uh, I do think like some of the like mistakes in canon are just a fact of like. Somebody else taking their own spin on a scene. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sometimes definitely that is that is the feeling. Um, one time when it wasn't the feeling is that they did the the whole spider leg thing where in. in <laughs> Le- oh, my God. <laughs> where they just straight up forget who Daisy's kid's dad is. And it's like it's spider leg, right? It's really not. It's not. But don't they have they, they do, do have, have the, kids later. Yeah, they do that's, have kids together later. That's the thing. Yeah, later they have kids, but this this was not the litter. So that must have been the confusion. <laughs> yeah, he was not the father here. You are not the father. But it just cra- I yet. was like, wow, that uh, yet. <laughs> <laughs> that and the the way they just mention in one line the tunnels uh like it's clear that mm. this is written after or at least midway through power of three the the novella uh leaf pools leaf pools wish itself so like they mention the tunnels and and in our reading we're like what the fuck are the tunnels we haven't seen the tunnels yet uh i'm excited about the tunnels though we're gonna get there soon. i am excited about the tunnels I'm so excited to read the site and to get into our our upcoming season. Who boy. Yeah, who boy. We got a lot that we're going to be talking about. Prepare potentially for some longer episodes. Ooh, exciting. I just feel like there's going to be a lot of uh, discussion happening. Yeah, I think we're going to have a lot to talk about. Uh, you guys got off easy on the Grey Stripes adventure episode. Yeah. You better watch <laughs> out. We slacked on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see. Oh, I really liked uh, the little mention of the leaf pool saying that like Cinderpelt used a skeleton to like. 
I was used, like a prey skeleton to yes. show the the way that bones fit together. I'm like, hello, that's so cool. What the fuck? We're doing Grey's Anatomy shit this over shit, here. That shit ruled. That's such a yeah. good idea. I loved that. I constantly have a joke that like the cats are gonna perform transplant surgery before the series is over, but like shit like this is why I have this joke. Yeah, because like they are doing so much. There's gonna be a transplant. Like someone is going to get a heart transplant. I'm <laughs> sure of it. <laughs> oh my god! It, Can it you- may be Star Clan assisted, but it will happen. This I'm calling it. It's going to happen one day. <laughs> I love this. There's a thing. It's not heart transplant, but there is some very specific medicine that goes on. I want to say vision of shadows. Okay. That I'm excited for us to discuss. These cats be learning. These cats, these cats. These cats be learning. They're, you know that uh, TikTok sound that's going around right now that's like, I can feel the frontal lobe developing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's how I feel about the cats sometimes. Again, you know, we mentioned earlier in our recordings uh, before that they're going to build mechs. Like, it's going to happen. I want to see a cat mech like... so bad. I want to see a cat <laughs> mech so bad. <laughs> they are going to... Uh, build war machines and destroy the two legs uh, and cats will rule the earth. Cats will rule. I loved that. Uh, but yeah, I loved that. <laughs> I loved uh, I loved all of the like little the bracken fur and cinder kit moments mm. at the beginning. Oh, baby. Baby cinder kit is so precious. I know. I love her so much. Oh, I can't wait to see more of her. I know me too. I don't really have that much else to say about these honestly like not even for the short stories i kind of made my point with like i do think that they were both like very good short stories i very much enjoyed definitely poking into those we both liked them so much maybe we're gonna read them yeah that might happen you know maybe we'll have special guests who could say maybe we will ah you know getting special guests i think they're gonna take away like our spotlight though (laughs) If we got special if guests, got. of course. Like, we, yeah. this is all hypothetical. Mm-hmm. Be- <laughs> Before we move on to that, I do want to talk about, you had a note here about uh, Squirrel Flight and Leafpool raising the kits together. I would love yeah. to touch on that, too. Oh, let's do that. That was so sweet. That was so, it was so good. What good scenes. Leafpool at some point is like, I just wish that I, it could be this forever. And I felt that way, too. What a sweet little family they made. I really liked the moment where Squirrel Flight was like, Leafpool, if I'm going to raise these kids, you should at least let me have some uh, say in naming them. Like, I really, that yeah. that scene really worked so well for me. And Leafpool having this pain and just like watching Leafpool's whole arc through that of having to come to accept that like she can't raise these kids and the way that she wants to so bad. And also Mm -hmm. it makes me so mad because StarClan, StarClan, just let her raise the kids. It's not that big a deal, but whatever. You know, what what do I know? What do we know? What do I know? We've just been complaining about medicine cats not being able to have families for uh, 20 years. I still so. think medicine cats should be able to have babies. Let the medicine cats fuck. Let them fuck. What's so bad about it? Anyway, uh, those scenes were, those scenes were really cute. I loved seeing baby Holly, Lion, and Jay. I love how Jay Kit is just, like, world's most ominous baby. <laughs> right. He's the <laughs> fucking child that looks at the end of the hallway and says, my friend's down there. Yeah. <laughs> He's too way too smart for to it. It's also wild that we'll get to this later, but it's it, it's wild that they are like talking and having cognizant conversations with each other and with Leafpool and Squirrel Flight, but still do not end up remembering this. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't remember shit from when I was teensy. Yeah, but I remember shit from like once I could when I could by the time I could speak, I have memories. Oh, see, I don't. Oh, see, this is this is a this is one of those things where Scout, your uh, your, your, your experience is your not experience universal. Is, it's not universal. I have I have an extremely long memory, so I'm like those babies would remember. Yeah, me a baby remembering. Me a baby remembering. <laughs> no, I mean I do agree that I think like they were definitely having more 
actual conversations than they probably should have to be not remembering that. But like, yeah, yeah for, for Jake it to go over to her and be like, you're not walking with us in the front anymore. is like, that's such a pointed thing to say, little baby J-pop, but or J-Kit, yeah. but, but J-Kit, you know, is also J-Kit. Yeah. Oh, not, it's not that important, but throw away, throw away line. This confirms that apprentices no longer go to the moon pool. Uh, we had this discussion like 20 episodes ago or something that we were like, I don't remember that the cats go to the, like all the apprentices go to the moonstone all the time. Like, is that a thing that happened? And then they said it in the first series. It seems like they stopped it after moving to the lake. I don't know if that's just the thing the Aaron's kind of threw in here to be like, see, this is why they don't do it anymore. But the we we have we have the answer in writing is that they don't do that anymore the way that they did with the moonstone. Yeah, I caught that and I was like, hey, hey, we got this. <laughs> uh, I think uh, that's that's it for me on Leaf Pool's wish. Yeah, and then I've already made my point <laughs> about <laughs> we need to talk. You had some points about uh, the right choice that I'm very interested. Yeah, um, I think yeah. Should I? Should I read it and then and then I say my thing or should I say my thing and then read it? I think whatever you want. Um, I think I'll read it then. It's pretty it's uh, pretty it's a pretty, it's pretty, quick pretty one. short. Leafpool emerged from the trees and padded up the slope to the place where she could look out over the whole lake. She had left Brightheart watching Firestar while he slept. The Thunderclan leader hadn't lost a life in the fox trap but his neck was bruised and he wouldn't be able to eat or speak for a while. Leafpool shuddered, remembering the sight of him lying so still with the trap clutched around his neck and a trail of blood leading away from his body. All the way down to the lake, where Hawk Frost lay half in, half out of the water, with a scarlet wave lapping at his fur. Before there is peace, blood will spill blood. The prophecy had come true. Brambleclaw had killed his half-brother, Hawk Frost, to save Firestar. Leafpool shook her head. StarClan may have sent her a dream of brambles with claws protectively circling the hollow, but she had felt nothing but fear when she heard Firestar name Brambleclaw as his deputy. And her first thought when she saw Firestar's body slumped beside the trap was, Brambleclaw did this. She reached the top of the hill and stopped dead in surprise. A cat was sitting with his back to her, his head lowered and his shoulders hunched as if the lake was painful to look at. Brambleclaw? Brambleclaw's head shot up and he looked around. Leafpool, I didn't expect to see you here. His voice was flat and his amber eyes were clouded. I often come up here to admire the lake, Leafpool meowed. Her heart was thudding in her chest and she told herself to stop being such a mouse brain. Brambleclaw had killed his own kin to save Firestar. There was no reason to be scared of him. Brambleclaw stood up. I won't disturb you. Squirrelflight is probably wondering where I am anyway. No, stay, Leafpool told him. There's plenty of room. She swept her tail to indicate the open stretch of grass that turned into WindClan territory, where the ground began to slope down before rising up to a longer, flatter ridge. Brambleclaw nodded and sat down. Almost at once, his shoulders hunched and he closed his eyes. Is everything all right? Leafpool questioned. She couldn't ignore how dejected he looked. Is it Hawkfrost? It made sense that Brambleclaw would grieve for his kin, no matter how he had died. No, Brambleclaw meowed without looking up. It's me. Leafpool sat down, easing her growing belly to one side until she was comfortable. Oh, my precious kits, what will happen when you arrive? She pushed the thought away. There was time enough to worry about that. You can talk to me, you know, she told Brambleclaw. I'm your medicine cat. It goes with the job. But if you weren't Medicine Cat, you wouldn't have anything to do with me, would you? Brambleclaw flashed back at her. Admit it, Leafpool. You don't trust me any more than the rest of ThunderClan, and you wish Firestar had never made me deputy. Leafpool bristled. If you recall, it was my dream from StarClan that reassured Firestar you were the right choice. Glowing amber eyes burned into hers. I bet you wish you'd never closed your eyes. Leafpool took a deep breath. I don't have to trust you, Brambleclaw. Star Clan approves of you, and my sister loves you. I just hope you don't do anything to let either of them down. Brambleclaw looked at the ground. Then what about today? 
that was all my fault. What? Leafpool was shocked. How can you say that? You saved Firestar. I had to kill my own brother my first day as clan deputy, and I had to take another cat's life. What kind of beginning is that? An unlucky one, Leafpool conceded. But you're a hero in the eyes of the clan now. Brambleclaw raised his gaze to her. Really? Or do they think I'm bad luck because I haven't had an apprentice? Leafpool flinched. Brambleclaw was right. Many cats were anxious that Firestar had gone against the warrior code by appointing a deputy who hadn't been a mentor. And she shared their fears. Was today's violence and bloodshed a warning that the code should not have been broken? But if Starkland didn't approve, why send the sign that sealed Brambleclaw as Firestar's choice? She shook her head, trying to clear it. I can try as hard as I like, but I'll never do anything right, Brambleclaw growled, and Leafpool was startled by the bitterness in his voice. I will bring nothing but trouble to ThunderClan because I was made deputy when I shouldn't have been. My clanmates didn't trust me before. Now they will blame me for everything that goes wrong, every drop of blood that is lost. Whatever I do, I will destroy my own clan from within. The blood roared in Leafpool's ears, and her eyes were dazzled by the red glow of the setting sun as it turned the lake crimson. Brambleclaw's words didn't sound like a threat. They sounded like a prophecy. Yeah. So the thing that I think is so interesting about <laughs> this is the way it sets up this feeling of doubt around Brambleclaw. I'm not going to get into too much detail here, but I just think this story and having read it is going to frame a lot of things that are coming in the future uh, really interestingly. And I'm just I'm so curious to see how it will echo through the rest of the reading of like this idea of Brambleclaw's appointment as deputy being kind of like a cursed or haunted one. Mm -hmm. um, and this this like sets up that feeling so good and uh, very interested to be able to speak of it more as we go further. I I think it will be very interesting. Mm -hmm. Considering things that I know about uh, what goes down with Brambleclaw later on. Yeah, gonna destroy ThunderClan from within. That surely can't happen. And I'll be fine. No, for sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. It's not gonna be a problem. I think he's just overreacting. I think he is, yeah. Yeah, I really liked... I. So I think when I, I think a while back I had actually read the play. Like, I feel like that's something that I had read before, like back in the old days. I feel as it though was... it probably circulated around. Yeah, but The Right Choice was one that I did not read until this, uh, until we read it for this podcast. And I think it's a really interesting kind of bit of foreshadowing. Yeah. We also like... As the uh, in our next arc, we're not really going to see a lot. We're not going to see like any Brambleclaw POV and we're not really going to like get a lot of interest, but like Brambleclaw's introspection and stuff as we go into yes. this next arc. And so getting to see this and like see the way that he was feeling after what happened in Sunset is really, really interesting to me. No, I 100 percent agree because it feels like everything that's happening with Brambleclaw and Squirrel Flight and all that stuff in the next arc is like in the background to yeah, all of the nonsense that's happening their kids um, are having like a whole other thing go on and they're off to the side like yeah. having their whole thing go on and we don't get to see that at all because our protagonists they're, are they're teens <laughs> they're teens they are so focused on their own feelings and they are not thinking about their adoptive slash you know Mm -hmm. they're not thinking about their their relatives they're bullshit. not thinking about their relatives at all none of that is yeah. none of that is registering it's so gone 100 percent. oh yes i'm excited i'm excited about that i'm very excited about it and i really liked uh we we both really liked the uh the we need to talk script as well in fact mm -hmm. uh we want to do a little reading yeah location the narrow, overgrown stream that runs through the woods at the edge of the moor, which marks the border between ThunderClan and WindClan. Time? Early leaf fall, 
two moons after the death of Hawkfrost on ThunderClan territory in mysterious circumstances. Leafpool is waiting for Crowfeather in the shelter of a holly bush. As he walks along the border on the side of the stream, she pops out. Crowfeather, wait! He has no idea she's there. What? Leafpool, what, what are you doing here? I... I wanted to see you. Why? Because it's been moons since I spoke to you, and... There's something I think you should know. No, there isn't, Leafpool. You don't have to tell me anything anymore. We belong to different clans, remember? Why are you being like this? It was hard for me too, you know. But ThunderClan needs me to be their medicine cat. I don't have any choice. You did have a choice, and you chose to stay with them. Uh, Look, I shouldn't be talking to you. What if somebody sees us? My clanmates have only just begun to trust me again, and that's mostly thanks to Nightcloud. Nightcloud? Why? She... she had my kits last moon. One star is going to announce it at the next gathering. Oh, I didn't know. What did you think I'd do? Let my clanmates go on thinking I was more loyal to ThunderClan? Nightcloud's a great cat, and a good mother. You were right, Crowfeather. We don't have anything to say to each other now. Goodbye. Before Leafpool can leave, three ThunderClan cats appear. Brambleclaw, Cloudtail, and Berrypaw. Leafpool, are you okay? Yes, uh, I'm fine. Uh, what are you doing here? Doesn't WingClan have enough warriors to send out proper patrols? Of course we do. What are you doing out here on your own? One Star doesn't keep us prisoners in the camp. Just go, Crowfeather. So So you two just happened to meet here, did you? That's right. I I remember you. You went away with Leafpool just before the Badger attack, but then you came back. That was a long time ago, Barry Paul. We don't need to talk about that now. No, we don't need to talk about anything. Has Crowfeather been bothering you? No, it's nothing like that. At least your clanmates trust you. Three Wind Clan cats appear. One Star, the leader, Torn Ear, one of his senior warriors, and Torn Ear's apprentice, Hairpaw. Greetings, Brambleclaw. Is there a problem? One of your warriors has been trying to talk to Leafpool. Oh, for Star Clan's sake. I see one of our warriors and two of yours, plus an apprentice. Do you call that a fair fight? There was no talk of fighting until you turned up, Torn Ear, if that's what you want. Yeah, I may be an apprentice, but I can fight as well as any ThunderClan warrior. Well, if you only fight as well as a ThunderClan cat, then you're nothing to be scared of. Come here and say that. I'll scratch your ears off, you piece of fox dung. There's no need to fight, Barry Paul. Can't you see they're just mocking you? What's the matter, Brambleclaw? Worried my apprentice would shred the fur off yours? Or do you think we wouldn't actually fight? Wind Clan aren't your cozy allies anymore. Not now Tallstar is dead. We're as strong as any of the clans now, and I think it's time you found that out for yourselves. Every cat knows the only reason Wind Clan cats run so fast is because they keep running away. Brambleclaw, it looks as if your clanmates are desperate for a fight. Aren't you going to control them? I don't see why I should, if you let your warriors insult them. I'd easily beat that dumb apprentice over there. Every cat knows he's half kitty pet. My mother came from Horse Place. That doesn't make her a kitty pet. We're loyal to ThunderClan now. I'm glad you didn't come to you for help first. ThunderClan has quite a history of taking in stray kitty pets, doesn't it? Not quite so welcoming to other clan cats, though. Like Hawk Frost. He came into our territory to kill Firestar. What do you think we'd do? Take him to our camp and let him have the first pick of the fresh kill pile? You didn't get a chance to do that, did you? Seeing as he managed to stab himself with a piece of wood and rolled into the lake to die. Hawk Frost's death has nothing to do with you. He was a traitor to the Warrior Code and River Clan are well rid of him. Oh yes, Thunder Clan cats always do what the Warrior Code tells them to. That's not fair, Crowfeather. Come on. Thunder Clan may be able to waste time, but we have a patrol to finish. Brambleclaw, I suggest you tell your clanmates to stay away from WindClan's territory and their warriors. 
There is only peace at the full moon, remember, and my cats will fight to protect what's theirs. Your cats have nothing that ThunderClan wants. Come on, Cloudtail, Berrypaw, and G.U. Leafpool. Thank you, Brambleclaw, but I can make my own way back. Bye, kitty pet. I'll be ready for you next time. Ready to be beaten, you mean, because that's what'll happen. Goodbye, Crowfeather. I hope we don't regret that we didn't speak today. So I really, and this is kind of what I was talking about with the the night cloud situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I think it does show in this, at the very least, like, we get that hint of the fact that Crowfeather was like, okay, well, I've got to show that I'm loyal to WindClan more than I am to Leafpool, so I've got to find a mate in WindClan. But I think the timing of it just definitely makes it seem like that is something that he was doing while they were still seeing each other, which is Crowfeather. Uh, it's not the greatest thing you've ever done. Crowfeather, it's not the, it's not the hottest look. That's a, that's a Crowfeather L. I'm very curious when we eventually get to Crowfeather's trial to see like what that book's take on the timeline is. Yeah, I'm very interested to see what that is. I want to see like Crowfeather's side of all this shit so bad. Yeah, I'm very, very interested in what's going on in this boy's brain. Yeah, for real. The really fun thing about this script is that it was originally read out during a press tour. So they they were like doing a press tour and they would read it. And it was sometimes they don't even have a specific date for when Victoria Holmes wrote it. But like it premiered in May 2007. So this was for the site. This was like a press tour for the site, the first book of Power of Three. Uh, and they were reading this, which I think is really fun. I would have loved to be like, who was reading all the parts? I would have loved to be a fly on the wall. I'm trying to find a video. Oh, my God, that would be so good. That's right. We had cameras. <laughs> cameras existed in uh, 2007 oh this is a fan club performing the skit with puppets <gasps> i love the warriors fandom it's from a library's web or a library's youtube channel incredible oh my god the filming on this is not not it it's not it but i'm gonna share it with you anyway <laughs> no offense this was recorded in 2009 and it was recorded at an angle to the uh th the puppetry that they were doing mm -hmm. so you can hardly tell that they're cats it has nothing to do with the quality of the performance uh it has everything to do with the quality of the filming mm -hmm. um but yeah i really enjoy uh we need to talk. I think it's a really fun addition to the canon. Yeah. Everybody is like so all the character work is so good. It's so playful. Mm -hmm. It's I'm obsessed with uh, Cloudtail doing the is he bothering you, Queen? It, is it's this so, guy bothering you, is miss? He, <laughs> is he bothering you? It's so good. And it reminds me that they're cousins. You know, I, I forget about it a lot. Yeah. I love the two apprentices just talking shit at each other. It's great. Great, great little time. Fun, fun little story times in this one. Yeah, I think I think this was a nice way to to round out the arc. Yeah, because next time it's going to be new season, new arc, baby. New main characters, new wild power uh, jump. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> We're getting real magical with it, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll take us to the Aaron corner just real quick. Yeah. I could find nothing about the writing of this novella. Cool. <laughs> nothing. Nothing there. Could not find a single thing. Could not find an interesting comment about any of the characters. Unfortunately, just couldn't find it. Might be out there. If anybody has knowledge, send it to us. We got our email. We'll come into the Discord uh, and I can talk about it at a later date. Uh, oh, and not directly related to what we read today, but a couple episodes ago, we were talking about how long in fiction there is between sunset and the site. Uh, it is six months, which makes sense because because yeah. the kids are being apprenticed. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Super quick. Aaron Corner in and out. Speed run. Yeah, we're going to speed run sharing tongues as well. <laughs> uh, not much on Tumblr, but somebody did I love point out. Post. Um 
she's so lucky no one finds out. Like, my girl is two weeks from giving birth in the Thunder Clan camp, showing every sign of pregnancy, then mysteriously leaves and mysteriously comes back with kits. And literally everyone already knows she had a thing with Crowfeather. The pieces are all there. It's so true. They're so lucky that Squirrel Flight is just like basically princess of Thunderclan. Yeah. <laughs> and no one would doubt her. <laughs> right. Like, for real. I feel like if her father was not the clan leader, I don't think it would be believed. Mm -hmm. There is apparently someone did a PMV for Leafpool's Wish. I like this. I really like the designs of the characters. <laughs> the uh, Here's the summary for this. This was posted this year uh, in February. Hell yeah. Uh, it says, ah, this PMV feels way longer than one minute. It took me about a month, but it's here. I love this song so much because her primary instinct was to protect the child. She's such a selfless character. Uh, talking about Squirrel Flight. And I feel bad that Yellowfang, Feathertail, and Leafpool, yes, sorry babes, pressured her into taking the kits. <laughs> I feel things would have worked out better if Squilt hadn't have. And they had gone to, like, a surrogate mother instead of Leaf taking Squilf down with her. Still love Leafpool. Women's wrongs are women's rights, etc. <laughs> um, so, yeah. There's that. Uh, there was a... A uh, multi-animator project that seems to have fallen through. Rip. Uh, and then I've posted the uh, link to that puppet show. Yeah, I'm going to watch that after we wrap. Uh, yeah. AO3. There's actually nine works for the Leafpool's Wish novella. Oh. Uh, mostly it is rewrites or reimaginings to fit the story in their own AUs. Uh, and this is what I mentioned I wanted to talk about, about this, the era of warriors that we're leading into, I think is what really popularized. Like, there's obviously a lot of, uh, we've we've seen a lot for series one and two of, like, people changing the canon a little bit. But I feel like in the Power of Three arc, there was a lot more, like, collective fandom speculation um, because, you know, uh, at this point, when did Sight come out? 2007? 2000, April 2007. Okay. So if you're thinking about, if you're growing up with Warriors, you know, now you're heading into middle school, early high school, and that's when you're starting to think a lot more critically and a lot more analytically about the fiction and the books that you're reading. So... I feel like this era really popped off with people writing like continuations of the story in their own ways or uh, changing like the canon a little bit to fit something, something else. I think this is when that really popped off in the Warriors fandom. Hell yeah. I could just be remembering like my own experience, but I remember there being especially and we'll talk about this uh, when we get to the last book of... Um, the last one is called Sunrise. So, fun fact. Actually, we'll get to it later. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Don't <laughs> worry about little, that. That's a little preview. It's a surprise That's a little preview tool. for when we get to six. But, like, I'll talk about this more when we get to, like, five and six in our reading. But, like, there were... a But after Long Shadows, there were so many, like, speculative fix about what the hell was going to happen in that last book in this art. Oh, incredible. Um, I wrote one myself. I wrote it literally in the span of time between Long Shadows coming out and Sunrise coming out. Incredible. Because um, I did go back. I did go back and check the numbers on that. And it literally I did write it in the span of like us not knowing anything. Hell yeah. But I remember there were a lot of people who were like very invested in like speculating about what the end of power of three was going to look like. So very interested to like go back and see, uh, see this again. It is, it is truly tragic that fanfiction.net has an abysmal yeah, search function. Cause I'm rough. sure there's like so much good stuff for power of three out there. That's about four months. I went and checked the uh, release dates. You. Yeah. I wrote it in four months. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, but those four months, everybody was speculating. I'll have to see if I have like some, uh, I may still have some favorited on my old fan fiction uh, account. Incredible. So I'll have to go see. Incredible. But yeah, I'm really looking for, I will, I'm really looking forward to seeing that aspect of the fandom shine through in Power of Three is just the amount of speculation that came about with this particular art. Cause there's a lot, 
Yeah, it's there's a, a lot of things going on. There's a lot of things to speculate on. That's for sure. There really are. So very interested to see. Let's say we uh, pick our warrior cat of the week. Hell yeah. My warrior cat of the week is Cinder Kit. Oh, that's so good. She had such a good moment, uh, like, at the beginning of this, where she was talking with Leafpool, and Leafpool has the little quote about, like, she just seems, like, so Mm -hmm. wise beyond her little years. And also, like, her interaction with Brackenfur, her dad is so cute, and I just love, I love Cinder Kit! I love her! I'm basic. I picked Leafpool. Hey, that's Um, that's a reasonable one. (laughs) I just really liked seeing, like, seeing her struggles. Yeah. I just, it made me feel a lot more sympathy for her. Not that I didn't have sympathy for her, but, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of the Leaf Pool Crow Feather romance. Mm -hmm. But, like, it is, it was really nice because I stopped reading shortly after the reveal that Mm -hmm. she was their parent. So, like, I never really got to see much of her interacting with them in the in that context yeah um and it was really nice to see her be a mom and like it just made me sad because she she really did want to want to take she really did she really did want to raise them it's spoilers but they're so mean to her later those kids are so fucking mean to her it's so fucking rough jake is especially oh my god i can't we can't get into it we're gonna get into it soon Ah! but yeah um (laughs) it so it was really nice to see like genuine tenderness between her and the kids. Yeah, I, think it was I really, really, nice. really liked getting to see her be a mother for like this perfect two week period. Yeah. Oh, I wish she had gotten to do it more. I hate. I know. I hate Star Clan. Yeah. <laughs> Star Clan sucks booty. Star um, Clan, I hate you. <laughs> if if we ever see each other, it's on site. It's on site. Uh, why don't you take us out, Scout? Let's take us out. If you have thoughts, opinions, questions, or memes to share with us, you can write to us at pawsandclawspod at gmail.com. That's paws as in what a cat has, claws as in the part of speech, pod as in podcast. We are also on Twitter and Blue Sky at pawsandclaws and on Tumblr at pawsclawspod. Listeners who are 18 years and older can come join us on Discord, which will be linked in the show notes. We are brought Brought to you by the TWG Podcast Network, which you can find at theworstgarbage.online. And you can find me on Twitter, Tumblr, or Blue Sky at Humble Goat and see the art that I do, including our podcast cover art at scoutwilkinson.myportfolio.com. Our dramatic reading of We Need to Talk featured the voice talents of AC Fachi as Leafpool and One Star. Chase Allheart as Crowfeather and Berrypaw, Stephen Hilger as Brambleclaw and Tornier, and our indomitable editor AJ Falari as Cloudtail and Hairpaw. You can hear more of everyone's beautiful voices across the other podcasts on the TWG network found at theworstgarbage.online. And you can find me on Twitter at plot underscore twists, on Blue Sky, theoretically, <laughs> uh, at plot hyphen twists, or on Tumblr at antique hyphen romantic. Our next episode will be out in two weeks, where we will begin season five by discussing The Power of Three, book one, The Sight. Read along by buying the book from a local bookstore or checking a copy out from your local library. Until then, dear listeners... May Star Clan guide your paws. Garbage. Oh, my.